And welcome back, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This is the Mindset Podcast, episode 104, with your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. And today's repeat guest, we're having back on the show, Amy K. Wilson. Again, Amy K. Wilson is a board-certified geriatric pharmacist. She's a fitness professional, and she's she's got a breadth of experience and knowledge in the fitness space um, and the nutrition space, training, uh, whatever, you know, health-related she's your she's your person so amy welcome back on the show happy to have you on the mindset podcast again hey alex excited for part two and we'll probably won't have enough time for this but <laughs> part three four and five so yeah glad to be back absolutely and one one thing i want to start off by saying amy was um like like let's start off talking about a little bit about caffeine intake now i know like you know there's a lot of information out there regarding caffeine, how much you should take, how much is adequate. Um, let's say like you're an athlete or a non-athlete. What are kind of some suggestions, right? Um, of like that you tell your your clients or your patients, mm-hmm. like of ca- like if the, let's say there's someone that's caffeine sensitive, but yeah. they still want to use it to perform, that they still like to use it for focus. Like what are some kind of parameters that you put that you tell them that they should put in place for that. So caffeine is something that's very individualized. And that's what people have to understand is that I'm sure you, you know, think about you might be like fine with caffeine. I'm fine with caffeine. I have, um, I've had my DNA done. I know what my DNA, I know what, what's how it breaks down. I don't get the jitters. I can drink a cup of ca- coffee at 8 PM and go to sleep. Wow. It does not affect me, but we all know that person who says, Oh my gosh, if I have a cup of ca- uh, coffee, I am wired for the rest of the day, or I got to cut myself off at 1 PM because I get all the, I get jittery. I get heart palpitations, all of that. So remember that it's always, 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 always to listen to your body. Cause your body is going to tell you how you metabolize things. Your body's going to tell you if you're sensitive to something, don't go by somebody that says, Oh no, that doesn't, that's not true. Your body's going to tell you. So get that out of the way. Everything's always individualized. First of all, I have my cup of coffee right here. I am a coffee freak and (laughs) I drink mine black for the most part. And here's what the thing is that we used to say. We used to say, oh, you can't be drinking coffee. It doesn't go towards your water goal because it's a diuretic, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Wrong. Yes, you can have coffee. Yes, you can count it towards your water goal. It should not be your single source of hydration though. No. When it becomes antidiuretic, when it becomes this thing that's going to cause you to lose too much is when you are pretty much over two, three pots of coffee a day. So it's a high gram amount that you have to drink in order to do that. But you can get too much caffeine. And we have seen that in kids. We've seen that in athletes when they take not a cup of coffee, but the extreme energy drinks that have six or seven sources of caffeine in it. You'll see caffeine and then you'll see all these other things that you didn't realize were also sources of caffeine. That's where you have to be careful. Caffeine is a great pre-workout. I get that question all the time. What's the best pre-workout? What should I take? Really a cup of coffee is a great pre-workout. I drink a cup of coffee before and during working out and it does help. But once again, it's individualized. Remember, if you are having heart palpitations, if you are feeling kind of dizzy or shaky, caffeine maybe not be for you. And if you notice it, like one cup of coffee, you're fine. Three is when you start getting those symptoms back off. I'm not a big fan of energy drinks. I'll tell you that right now. It's like there's certain energy drinks that I like um, that are more natural and that don't have all the sugar and all the chemicals in. And I will give a shout out to the company. It's eBoost. They make great products that are not um, full of crap. But once again, even in, if you look at every energy drink, it says consume with caution. Yeah. It says max of how many. It's not something you should be pounding every hour. If you are tired and you're relying on caffeine and energy drinks, we need to look at your sleep. We need to look at your food intake. We need to look at your stress levels because caffeine is amazing, but we should never be using it as a crutch. Yeah, no, absolutely. And one thing I used to do when I was younger, uh, you know, because I'd be working like a 10, you know, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. shift. So it was a little bit later. So and I'd be doing a lot of commuting back and forth because I was working at a bank at the time. And I would go to my friend's place. I would drive, you know, basically 
let's say like, yeah, over an hour to get, I would go straight from work to my friend's place and we would work out. And that was just like our, our routine. But some days I'd be so like gassed mentally. Right. And, and, uh, to, tr to help prepare for the, tr for the workout, I would need at least 15 to 20 minutes. I would need that extra caffeine boost. So at the time mm -hmm. I was drinking coffee, but I also need, I at the time I felt I needed like pre-workout. I was taking pre-workout. Now, what's your thoughts on pre-workout? Cause I used to take it years ago. And every time I try and take it now, I, my body can't handle it. It's too much. Like I'm, I'm hypersensitive to caffeine. So yeah. I, I literally, as long as I'm getting enough sleep, like getting over, you know, seven mm -hmm. and a half hours, getting very close to eight. I try to aim for eight every single night. It doesn't always happen, but for someone that's sensitive to caffeine, um, like what's your thoughts on like pre-workouts and should people just, just be careful with pre-workouts? Yeah. It's, it's once again, it's, it's an individual. Do you yeah. need it? Do you need it for the extra oomph? Um, some people are like, oh, like, well, I get tingly and I get the warmth. Yeah, that's called niacin. That's one of the things that they put in the pre-workout. So you yeah. get that tingly yeah. and warmth. And yes, it does have B vitamins. Um, but once again, it's individualized. Does it help you? I We all wear monitors now, right? I have yeah. the Ura ring on. I have yeah. a um, Apple Watch. Use those monitors. See what your heart rate does. Does it yeah. go into the max? If you're lifting, is it getting too high? Are you able to recover? Is it allowing you to having that, you know, where you go and you go hard and your heart rate comes up? Is it allowing you to drop 20 to 30 beats? Or is that pre-workout keeping you in that state of, of being high in, in max heart rate zone all the time. That's not a good thing. Yeah. So we want to be able to come up and come down. Now, if it gives you a little boost, a little edge, um, that is okay. Once again, it's like what people think is, and this is, we're, we're all guilty. I'm guilty. The latest supplement's going to make me stronger. The latest supplement's yeah. going to help me lose weight faster. The latest supplement's going to get me to where I need to be faster. Yeah. No. No. Supplements help. But it still comes down to what you eat, how you sleep, your stress level, and your actual working out program. Supplements are great, but they're a supplement. It's not meant to the end all be all, and it's not going to be the answer to your prayers. And that's what we all want. We want this magic pill, this magic powder, this magic drink. No, doesn't it doesn't exist. So yeah. what should you take when you're working out? Hydration, hydration, hydration. You know, that's when you can add some different supplements. Maybe it's BCAAs, maybe it's creatine, things that your body will actually need during a workout because we really don't need pre-workout. No. We really don't. We need hydration is what we need. Yeah. So look at that. Maybe you're overtraining. Maybe you're so exhausted that you're overtraining and you need to take a break, which will, I know it's so counterintuitive because I used to hate this. And it's like, <laughs> I would think, oh, Oh, no, no, no. Balls of the wall every single day. Got to push, yeah. got to push, got to push. Yeah. You know, I, if I don't, I won't get gains. Well, actually, the reason you're not getting gains is because you're not giving your body a break. So yeah. maybe look at that. Yeah. So there's so many other things to look at besides just the pre-workout. It's the kind of, take a, take a 360 view, do the whole picture and play some experiments. Try it without going with pre-workout for a workout. See what happens. Try it with, try going three days without and see the difference. See if you're PRing or if you're just so wired, you're going through the workout so fast, you're not even getting anything out of it. So yeah, there's all these yeah. things that you can play with, but listen to your body. And I always say, use those trackers to see if you're getting to where you need to, where you need to be. Absolutely. And speaking of trackers, I use my Fitbit and I did do like, I'd like to track my sleep, especially like mm -hmm. how much deep sleep I get. I know for a fact, magnesium, every time I take 400 milligrams of magnesium, I take it like, you know, half an hour to an hour before bed, I have the deepest sleep and it boosts my deep sleep by like 20% or whatever it is. Like it's, it's huge. And, and I rarely get up when I take it. So mm -hmm. I find that's like when I take magnesium, the night, but let's say the night before I train, like the day before I train and I train the next day. I feel yeah. much more rested. And then, um, and then, but yeah, like I did do a, a workout last week where I took pre-workout and I was wired. I was too wired. So that's why I don't like to take it. Right. And I, I'm talking like, like not, not a full scoop or anything like that. Like maybe a third of a scoop or less, maybe like a quarter. And it's just still too much. But when I took it, I had my Fitbit on and you're right. It, it, I still couldn't like my heart rate literally was redlining it. It was like, yeah, 
you know, when I'm in like whatever zone two, like that steady state where my heart's pumping, but it's not like redlining it. That's like, mm -hmm. let's say, I don't know, 125, 130. That's like a decent amount. But, but when I took the pre-workout and I was training, like, yeah, like my body's feeling like way more exhausted. I'm exhausting myself quicker. And then yeah. it was like 160 to 170 when I was at the peak of my heavier sets. Mm -hmm. So, and that's like, and then, and then it would only drop down. It would drop down 20 points. But sometimes it would only drop down like 10 to 15 points, which yeah. was still didn't it, feel like it, enough it, in between. You're not, you're not getting your rest. And the other thing too is look at this, look at the ingredients yeah. and not just the sources of caffeine, but what's the sweetener? Yeah. Is it sucralose, NutraSweet, Aspartame yeah. K? Is there added colors? Is it using beet juice or is it using red number five? Yeah. You know, it, you know all these different chemicals and additives just as you, if you're watching your nutrition, you're like, oh, I'm eating whole foods, I'm eating whole foods. But then you take all these supplements with all the crap in it. Yeah. Same thing. You want to see what is in those ingredients and actually, and how is it going to affect your body and what's it doing? Yeah, no, for sure. And speaking of like still around like supplements, caffeine, one thing that I've been doing a little bit differently, which I've been, I want to get your input on it is sodium. Like I'm not talking sodium mm -hmm. intake from my food or nutrition but I'm talking about supplementing before a workout or before I start the day. Like I did it again this morning uh, before I have my first cup of coffee. So I'm not as jittery. I was mm -hmm. reading supplementing with pink Himalayan sea salt, like just yeah. a teaspoon or half a teaspoon. Plus I take that. So I take that in the morning with uh, electrolytes, right? Like a mm -hmm. zero sugar or very minimal sugar electrolyte drink, the bio steel one, like lemon lime. So I take the electrolytes with the pink Himalayan sea salt um, let's say three quarters of a teaspoon and I just feel way less wired, but I feel very focused. It's like, um, and then I take that, let's say an hour after work, if I'm going to train like for like six o'clock, I work till five 30. Um, I take that and then like I play squash once a week. Mm -hmm. So holy smokes, if I take the salt in the morning and then I take the, the pink Himalayan sea salt in the evening. I, I just felt so much more focused and my body like was ready to perform. Like what's well, your thoughts on this? Two, two things. To do. So I do Ultima every morning, which is an, which is an electrolyte. Okay. So um, it's an electrolyte drink. What you need to do is one, look at the, look at the electrolyte profile on your, on your electrolyte drink. The same thing is that, are you already getting sodium in that? Yeah. If you yeah. are, you may not need the pink Himalayan salt because that's overkill. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, it might be one or the other. The thing about with doing, and it, and I'm not talking about sodium chloride, which is in your Morton's, the table sodium. We're talking about, you know, pink Himalayan sea salt, the Ultima drinks, there's LMT, there's all these other different things that you can do. What that does is one, our bodies are sponges and they need electrolytes. And we, a lot of times we don't get those because we're drinking soda or other things that don't have of the minerals and the electrolytes in it. What that does, especially for like squash or getting ready to work out or in the morning, when we wake up in the morning, we're technically we're dehydrated. We really are. You haven't been drinking at night. You go to the bathroom, you wake up after eight, nine hours, hopefully, hopefully it's not four or five <laughs> and you might be dehydrated. That's why it's so important to have that electrolyte first before your cup of coffee, because that is going to set your body up for the day and you're going to get hydration. Hydration and sleep are two of the most underrated things in the world. And Think about it. our bodies are made up of a majority of water. All our cells need water. Our skin needs skin needs water. All our electron, our our chemical processes need water. So starting yourself up during the day for that is great. What sodium will do is help get water into the cells and keep them there. So that's probably why you'd feel great with squash is because you're playing and you're hydrated. Yeah. Yeah. And you're able able to actually work and you're not like, oh, exhausted. A lot of times we're exhausted because we're just dehydrated. But you want to also be careful of getting over sodium because yeah. we know that's not great. Yeah. Um, it's very hard, although, you know, you see these articles, you'll see them in the summer about someone getting overhydrated. Yeah. But that's drinking a lot of water in a very, very short period of time where you're going to change the balances in your blood system. It is very hard to do. It's someone drinking gallons of water in a very, very, very short period of time. So I always get that with people like, is there, can you drink too much water? The rule of thumb for hydration is half your body weight in ounces. Yeah. So if you are a 130 pound female, that means you need at least 75 ounces of water. 
that's your minimum. If you add exercise or like in here where I live right now, we're getting in the eighties, you're going to sweat. You need to add more ounces, but the rule of thumb, the minimum would be half your body weight in ounces. Yeah. I read that too. Um, and I, or I, I yeah. totally did that wrong. 75 would be 150. So my math this morning is not good. Yes. I'm a <laughs> pharmacist, but you know, Hey, it's morning. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, do you take anything, um, or do you use any tools or devices for blood sugar monitoring? Um, yes. So every once in a while I'll do use a CGM, which is called a continued glucose monitor. The reason I do that is because I was pre-diabetic. Um, it runs in my family. I do carry the type two diabetes gene. And so I did use a CGM, a CGM has its limitations though. The cool thing, and let me tell you what a CGM will can do and what, what a blood glucose monitor can do. So CGM you wear, it measures the blood sugar in your interstitial fluid. So if you think about the old school blood glucose machines, they're still valid. You prick your finger, you put your blood on a strip, you put in the machine, and it's going to tell you your blood sugar at that moment in time, right there, instantaneous. So I want you to think about that as being the engine of a train. And I want you to think about the longest train ever that you're sitting there and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, there's finally the caboose. That's a CGM. It is about a five to 15 minute lag time on what your blood sugar is. And a lot of people use that as instantaneous. So like, wait a minute, it's instantaneous. No, 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 no. That's one of the reasons I don't like them in my nursing homes is because I have a lot of brittle diabetics or people that we need to monitor. We can't have that lag time. Yeah. What you can use it for is seeing how your body responds to things. Like, like I said, I have a type two diabetes. If I go simple carbohydrates, ice cream, even French fries, and I eat this and my blood sugar will spike very, very high. My husband's not at all. It is wow. not fair. What? Once again, it's individual as yeah. to yeah. what happens, but it's a good way to see what happens and how your body reacts to carbohydrates, sugar, proteins, fats. Here's the thing though. And I, what a lot of people get very focused on is like, oh my God, protein and fats don't move my blood sugar. So I'm not going to eat any carbohydrates. No. Because carbohydrates... And you can't get that obsessive. Yeah. What you need to find out is, okay, maybe there's an order that you need to eat the food. Maybe we start with the fat and the protein first and you eat your carbohydrates with low impact on the blood sugar, those are your low GI, eat those, and then you save your high impact carbohydrates for last. Because what happens is carbohydrates start their digestion process in the mouth and it goes right to the bloodstream. But if you start with protein and fat and fiber first, it's going to slow down the digestive process. It's going to slow down that impact into your blood glucose system. So if you're going to use them, use it as a tool to see how your body reacts, but don't go the extreme and say, Oh, you know what? Carbohydrates, they up my blood sugar and I'm not going to eat them. Cause guess what? That's normal. Yeah. Going up and down in blood sugar is normal. What we don't want are these humongous spikes. And most yeah. of those spikes are caused by simple carbohydrates, by, you know, the, I'm going to say it, the crap, the sugar, you know, the things that you really don't need or just have to eat them in moderation. It's not a daily thing. So it's very good to see that. The cool factor is, and I just read last week, is that the brand Dexcom, which is D-E-X-C-O-M, is going to make an over-the-counter version. Because right now, you can take your blood sugar, you can get one of the machines with the strips, and those are over-counter. The CGMs are not. They are by prescription only. But right. Dexcom, who I think is probably the best CGM monitor out there, is going to be making an OTC version. Now, don't know how much it's going to be, but they will be. And they, they do last about 14 days. The issue though is, is the first day is all about calibration. So you can't get any readings the first day. You still have to prick your blood sugar to see what's going on. And then you get about maybe 13 days out of it. So it's called biohacking, but it's, if you're like, okay, I don't understand why I'm crashing at noon. I don't understand why I'm not sleeping at night. I don't understand what's going on or if I feel shaky, because it may not be that you're going too high. Maybe you're going too low and it's a great 
tool for seeing where you are. Do you have to use one? No. Once again, your body's telling you what's going on, but it is nice if you are someone that's like, maybe you have type two diabetes that run in your family. You want to get a bigger picture. It's a great option to use. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like when I talked to my wife about it, she's like, oh, Alex, you don't want to do that to you. And I was like, because I'm such a, like a, you know, experimenter, I, I just like to know, like have these insights, uh, into my, like how my body responds. That's what I'm really after. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, so I can make adjustments. Right. Yeah. Cause I, cause I just, I don't like not knowing. I like just knowing the patterns, right. What's the patterns of how day to day, like, how am I managing the stress? How am I, you know, eating? Like, how do I have to eat? Do I have to eat more or less of something? Um, so that's mainly what I'm after. And just to really just understand my body and it's, you know, it's strengths and it's, it's, it's setbacks. Um, up with how I eat and train and everything. And, and that's what they're great for. If you can take a step back and see the patterns and see maybe how you're just, what's not good for is those of us, I'm sometimes that way too, who get very OCD, who get very laser focused and be like, Oh, yeah. you know, the all or none, you can't do that because yeah. it's summertime. I'm going to tell you right now, you get yeah. dehydrated. Guess what happens? You lose volume in your blood. Your blood sugar goes up. Yeah. So it's another reason why I stay hydrated, but there's all these things that you can see. But if you're someone who says, oh, no, no, no carbs for me because my blood sugar is going up. No, your body needs carbs. You just need to learn how you can eat them, how you incorporate them. And guess what? An everyday cookie may not be for you. The, the protein bars that you're eating may not be for you. It's like, you're going to have to go with complex carbohydrates. You're going to have to get your vegetables. You're going to have to get in more things that have fiber in it. And a lot of people, that's hard. A lot of people are like, oh, but I just get, I just get all my carbohydrates from fruit. I love fruit, but you also need other things too. No, absolutely. And let's, uh, let's talk about for the last piece, uh, alcohol. Uh, oh. Should we... You know, uh, drinking, is it okay to drink in a moderation? Should it be completely eliminated? Um, this one is, you know, this one might give me hate mail. Um, <laughs> okay. So what we have to remember is alcohol is a drug and we forget about that. We do. Our body sees alcohol as a foreigner, as somebody who is not supposed to be here. It sees it as a toxin. And especially for midlife women. So especially, I want to say midlife women, because, you know, we're in a stressful time. Pre after COVID, we went back to all the, all the stress. And I get a lot of clients come in. It's like, but I have wine every night. It helps me relax. Or I have, you know, it's, it's the party on the weekends. And I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. We just had Derby yesterday. So all these things and everything is always centered around alcohol. The problem is alcohol is a toxin. So what your body says is like, what are you doing here? And your liver's like, get out now. So it stops all the metabolic processes in your body, except what's going on in your liver. It puts all the function, all the things to the liver saying, mm -mm, you know, evicting, get out, get out, get out. The problem with that is, is, okay, now you're not metabolizing. Now you're not building muscle. Now you're not repairing. You're just trying to get this toxin out. If you're doing that every day, just think about how much that adds up. Yeah. So it's actually causing issues later in life. It's not helping for females. It's not going to help with your hot flashes. It's not going to help with perimenopause. It's not going to help with the fluff. For guys, it's the same thing. Same issues is that it's not going to help you get to your next level. You know, that's why we get beer guts. That's why we have extra... Um, there, you have to learn how to deal with your stress and not use it with alcohol because it's not going to get you where you want. We're now seeing some studies that it's a possibility that it could cause some issues with Alzheimer's. We know that, you know, it's a possibility that it helps it, it hinders the gut microbiome. And I know there's studies out there. It's like, Oh, but wine a day. Let me tell you, the study is a four ounce, four ounces. Four ounce. I know most people, which is a half cup, by the way. Oh Most people don't drink four ounces of wine at a time. Most wine glasses will hold probably about a half bottle. So our consumption is way over the top of what it needs to be. Can you have alcohol every once in a while? Yeah, but if you have goals, if you are trying to lose the fluff, if you are trying to, let's like, say, age backwards, alcohol ages you. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It ages you. So yes, can you have it in moderation? But if your goals are to maybe lean out or get fitter or age backwards or not have so much wrinkles in your skin and yada, yada, 
then alcohol may not be in what in what you want to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. But uh, this was an amazing uh, podcast again, Amy. And I uh, definitely have you on for a part three again to talk about, go into depth and talk about gut health too. Because that's something yeah. that's been really being talked about. Digestion, gut health, the uh, gut microbiome. Um, so thanks so much for uh, going on the Mindset Podcast again. And uh, how can our listeners connect with you? What platforms are you most active on? And yeah. Yeah, the best ways are either two ways. My website, which is amykwilson.com. That's A-M-Y-K-W-I-L-S-O-N.com. And of course, I'll send you a freebie if you tell me that you heard me on the Mindset Podcast. Or even better, follow me on Instagram. Send me a message there. Once again, tell me you heard me on Mindset and I would be happy to send you. I call it the fat day, five day, five day fat blueprint, fat loss blueprint. I love that. So, yeah. My listeners are going to love that. That's awesome. Oh, and I'm sorry. On Instagram, it's the nutrition coach pharmacist. That's so that's right. it. amykwilson.com. And on Instagram, it's the nutrition coach pharmacist. Awesome. I'm going to get working on the back end for our, uh, this episode Amy, later this morning. So. Awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get it. I'll get it published later this morning and uh, I'll send you the, uh, the clips. Dang. I gotta go mow the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Have an awesome rest of your weekend and we'll, we'll reconnect to get you on again. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Take care. Bye.